This is Brian Putt. Today I'd like to talk about creating STP metalog distributions. These were developed by Tom Keelan. And we want to generate these distributions from known data, from historical data for SIPs. So we're going to generate three of these things. I'm going to show you how to do them. Or the way I'm going to do it, you can easily generate a whole bunch. So here is basically a blank Excel file. And in here I have generated three SIPs, and they have names known as historical one, two, and three. And I want to generate some SIPs. So we're going to start by initializing. So we'll initialize this thing to, we'll say, oh, wait a minute, cancel. Yeah, reinitialize. I guess I want to reinitialize it. Okay. Initialize. And so now I've got my PM table and my SIPMath chart data. So what I need to do is I need to generate, I'm going to put the metalogs up here, so I'm going, to put, I'm going to do some calculations down here, which is going to be the calculate the percentiles. And we're going to generate a, a 0.1, a 0.5, and a 0.9. This is what's required for the metalogs. So <clears throat> For um, historical one, we're going to say equals percentile exe, and we're going to, I think I can just type in historical. If you didn't have the names, you'd point to them, okay? Comma, and I'm going to point to this, and I'll do that, and then I'm going to hard... Um, Put a dollar sign there and I can copy those across and then I can pull this down that'll give me one two and three copy this down to to here and then change these to a two and a three So now I want to generate my first metalog, STP metalog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'll say equals, let's say this first one. And we want to generate a name and then the P10, 50, 90 in a row. So I'm just going to come over here and point to this, point to these two, and then I'm ready to highlight these three and we'll go to SIP math, generate input, STP metalogs. Now it wants, it showed me the area that it wants to utilize. So if you have any data in here, in these cells, you'd want to cancel this and go move it around so you have this as available area for it to work. And then it wants a chart location, and I found that you really want to generate a chart location if you don't really want the chart. So I'm going to say I'll put just put it there for the time being, and we'll say OK, and it generates the STP metalog, and it shows you what the distribution. Now this is not uh, something that went on the PM table, so PM table right now is still blank. So what I want to do is I want to generate a. I'm going to put a seed over here. We'll just call this 105, okay? And then I'll generate a, a uniform distribution here. And I'm doing this with that seed because I want to be able to copy this to all. So now this is keyed off of this seed, and this is my random variable. And you can see that if I come up here and I do some trials, it's moving around. Okay, close. I'll now copy, I'm going to copy this row. I have three of them. So I'm going to put, do it like that. We'll call this two. But I think I need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it Metalog. Metalog Historical 2, right? And we'll call this Metalog Historical 1. And this is going to be Metalog historical three.
uh, oh, these are all the same because I haven't plugged in the new percent percentiles. So I'm just come over here and copy those down like that. Now I've got all my percent. I might, might want to point out that when I generated the first Metalog, it converted my number my equations to numbers to put them in here. If I wanted to put uh, references, I could. In other words, if I wanted to if I want to be able to change those SIPs, I could come down here and point to this, copy that across, and now I've got those in there. Uh, so now I don't want these graphs. Let's just get rid of those, okay? And we're going to name these. We're going to go SIP math define outputs, and we're going to name them Metalog Historical 1 and 3. Okay, okay, and now we're going to graph these things. I've, I've put the uh, the graphing up here on my quick access bar. You can do that for any icon up there, by the way. And we'll just do a cumulative. And then I'm going to cut that, control X, control V, Control X, Control V. I now have my three metal logs. And if I wanted to, I could hard code these, these nine numbers and I can then go back and eliminate my all this data. And so it can keep your models smaller. And now these random variables are available for anything else you might want to do. If you just wanted to sum up those, you could come over here and just say equals the sum. And define that as another very output, define outputs. And I can plot that. And if I wanted to, I could superimpose this over that. So I mean, that's the way, um, let's see, we, we'll put the legend on here so we can see what this is. Okay, there we go. All right, I think that about does it. If you wanted to, to check the distributions, you could resample these historical one, twos, and threes and then plot them. But uh, normally they're going to be really, really close. And so only if they're not close would you want to come over here to SIP math and then use the general metal logs. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want the file, let me know. If you want to get more information about SIPMath, you can visit probabilitymanagement.org. You can read The Flaw of Averages by Sam Savage. And I think there's a new version coming out. And you can um, review my videos on the YouTube channel. Just search for uh, Brian Putt. There's all kinds of things to include some fun things around the birthday problem. Let's make a deal. There's the taxi cab problem and so forth. So. Uh, as we're approaching the holidays, I want you to enjoy the holidays, but I also want you to stay safe. Thank you very much.